Hello and welcome once again to the A to the K Wrestling Show. We are season two. We are episode. <laughs> You've lost four, count. Them. I think I have lost <laughs> count already. That's how good I am. And on top of that, it's the most wonderful time of the year, guys. That's right. It's Rumble season. Yes. Oh yeah. And uh, let's just say we're both very excited for the Royal Rumble. My personal favorite pay per view. I think it might be a difficult decision for you, I'm Carl. On the edge. You can't, uh, you can't, can't deny, you you can't deny no. Mania. Um, but at the same you time, can't you can't deny, deny the Rumble. So. That's true. But coming up tonight, we are going to be looking at the Ringside Report, in which we'll be talking about all the latest news and rumours in the world of wrestling. Uh, we will also be following that with This Week in Wrestling, in which we'll talk about the four big shows being Raw, NXT, AEW's Dynamite, and SmackDown. And then, Carl... Are you going to hit them with seg three? Because we've got not one, but two seg threes <laughs> we do. this week. Not one, but two. Um, so first, we're going to be discussing the history of the Royal Rumble, looking back at some surprise entrants, hilarious botches, all the way through to unexpected winners and back-breaking performances in a segment we are calling 10, the best and worst of the Royal Rumble. And then there's more. So we're also going to be given a review of what... I personally deem to be the best Royal Rumble of all time. You can't say the greatest Royal Rumble because that means something else now. But the best Royal Rumble of all time. Yeah, yeah it didn't happen <laughs> it in Saudi. Didn't happen in Saudi. But, uh... but Royal Rumble 92. Um, so we're going to be going through that in a segment we are calling the Rumble Rewind. So we're going to take a look back at the best Rumble ever. But before that, Anthony, what have we got? It's the ringside report. <laughs> it's the ringside report. And I think, of course it is. I think, I had to think about that. <laughs> I think it's my turn this week, which means that you've probably put a load of shit in there, but we'll give it a go anyway. So I made most of it up. Yeah, it? standard. That's just, you know, standard of degree practices anyway. <laughs> isn't it? But coming up today on the ringside report, Undertaker <laughs> calls current WWE product soft, upsetting a number of current WWE superstars. The WWE reportedly have zero plans locked in for WrestleMania. <laughs> of course they don't. Ryback has teased <laughs> joining AEW. Dolph Ziggler's brother is going to be wrestling on AEW this week. Stephanie McMahon is hopeful of a Ronda Rousey return. AEW are planning a Battle of the Belts event? Question mark? Maybe. Mm. Dax Harwood wants Chad Gable in AEW. Impact doesn't even recognise who their own world champion is. Tony <laughs> Khan has stated that expanding AEW's calendar is going to be a big thing for 2021. And some breaking news. WWE Network shutting down. All that dun, dun, coming dun. up right now. So, Anthony, I believe the first one nice. is over to you. It certainly is, Carl. Now... I don't know how to feel about this because I'm a massive, massive hypocrite because if this was any other wrestler, I'd be like, what a cunt. Um, but Undertaker, very recently, I think he was on, I want to say it was Joe Rogan's was. podcast. If you've heard of that one, it's a good podcast. Just try it out. Anyway, um, he was talking about the current WWE product and they asked him sort of what his opinion was, it was is on the current WWE product. Um, and he, he's basically said that it's it's really tough for him to watch it right now. And I'll paraphrase somewhat if you want exactly what he said. Um, as I say, check out Joe Rogan's podcast. But um, he's essentially suggested that um, you know the 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 modern wrestlers are soft, S A W F T. Um, and he's referred to things which I think make him sound very much like old man taker. Like some of the stuff he's, he's referencing is like them being soft and they're not manly men is cause like they're all playing video games, these kids. And it's like, okay, taker. Okay. Gramps. So it's a little bit, I think if I'm being honest and, and, you know, taker's my favorite wrestler and I try not to, to, to complain too much here, but I think if I'm being honest, it's like a man who's a bit out of touch thinking that that's what's wrong with the kids today. And it's like, I don't know. I'm not sure he's right. And to the point that uh, Drew McIntyre has even responded to this, and he said, like, the difference between their era and our era is their era was very, uh, it, well, it was it was TV14. It wasn't PG, 
and they didn't have to try and stick in the PG. And there's nothing soft about what they do in the ring, but they do have more limitations on what they can get away with. And in a lot of respects, that is a good thing because there's some stuff from the Attitude Era that you wouldn't want to bring back. And I, I hate to say it. Well, I say hate to say it. I don't really hate to say it, but Drew McIntyre's got a better point. It's like, you know, they're still putting their bodies through a lot. I'd say in a technical wrestling sense, you know, there's probably you probably see a lot more of that now. Um, and yeah, I think it's unfair to say that they're soft just because it's not the attitude era old men thing. I mean, he has referred like he's even tried to suggest like you know um, they they all the, their generation you know they all got old at the same time, so there weren't there weren't enough guys to work with the younger guys. Which again, I'm a bit like, well, how does that work? Because there was always new talent coming in. Like maybe it's because you picked Maven and. Nathan Jones. Maybe it was because you had you backed a couple of horses that maybe didn't actually know how to wrestle. Taker. Maybe it was that. But um, nevertheless, I'm not moaning too much. Still love Taker, but I think he was a bit out of step with his thoughts on this. And we moan about the modern product all the time from a creative point of view. But uh, I think uh, Drew hit the nail on the head that it's still just as brutal in the ring for them. You know. Yeah, definitely. I think um, you'll have to excuse me because all the way through that, I was just singing the uh, two and a half men theme of men, 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 men. <laughs> um, <laughs> nice. But I think, um, you know, I think he's definitely rubbed a few people the wrong way, hasn't he? Because, uh, you know, Drew McIntyre has come out and said that. I think Austin Creed or Xavier Woods, whatever you want to call him, um, has uh, come out as well, hasn't he? Saying, you know, well, yeah, you know, excuse me for playing video games, but, you know, that's better than a. Uh, redacted <laughs> or whatever whatever he said in his tweet. The thing is it's um this is the problem though is like it feels almost like a direct shot at Xavier because it's most likely that he was one of the ones playing video games mm. and like it's just this weird old fashioned mentality of manliness isn't it to go video games that's soft it's like seriously you know you know how much money you made from video games uh, it's it's a shame as well isn't it because we've gone like all these years not really getting to know Taker and stuff like that. And then he's he's everywhere doing everything at the minute. And some of his views on stuff is just like, shit, you know, just, I wish he wasn't doing it. <laughs> like, stop, Taker, stop. <laughs> Ruining his own legacy. Um, but yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, maybe he was more of a silent character. I don't know. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, a little bit of a shit. And again, that was very much my, my opinion in a lot of senses there that, like, you know, I think he's just out of step. Um, and uh, you know, people might totally agree with what he's saying because a lot of people prefer the attitude era. But are we talking more nostalgia? Like, and I'll try and be fair and objective here and say, okay, in the modern product, we haven't got people being thrown off cages and nearly dying. So, okay, yeah, no one can argue. Mick Foley's probably one of the toughest people to ever step foot in the ring, and he's from that era. So, that doesn't mean that everyone else is soft by comparison. Standards have changed. AEW are getting a ton of grief for being haphazard with Matt Hardy, so it's not like you can get away with that now, anyway. And that was that wasn't it wasn't a planned spot or anything, but like the amount of grief they got for something being dangerous, it's like well, you can't exactly be throwing people off cages and you know busting your noses and breaking your teeth and stuff like that now. It just doesn't fly in in today's world. And it's not, I don't know, it's not the modern wrestlers' fault, is it? No, not at all. And I think you know, not to digress. Um, but in preparation, looking at some of the segments we've got um, around the Rumble and stuff like that, I was re-familiarised, if you will, with um, CM Punk uh, suffering a concussion in the middle of the Royal Rumble match and then con- like continuing to wrestle for another 20-odd minutes, including being put through a table afterwards by Kane. And I just mm-hmm. think, you know, the amount of shit AEW got um, for what happened with Hardy, uh, you know, interesting. But... Yeah. And do you know what? It's one of them. I'm not saying AEW shouldn't get shit because the idea was that, like, well, you know, that was stupid then, but we've learned. But that that's exactly my point, is that they've learned so much and it's a much more safe product and people aren't fucking ruined for the rest of their lives from doing it. Um, it's, a, it's a better thing and you can't call them soft just because they didn't nearly kill themselves. Undertaker has been very, very lucky to have such a long career. Oh, yeah. We've seen so many in his era have their careers ended. Absolutely. I mean, Taker's got two, you know, repaired hips. He's he's pretty much half cyborg at this point. So, um, <laughs> do you know what I mean? He's a uh, he has gone through a hell of a lot. But at the same time, as you say, you know, people the, the new generation playing video games or 
you know, in a PG world, not going through tables and doing crazy shit if the attitude era it doesn't exactly make them soft, does it? So yeah, I can I can see exactly. why they're a bit annoyed, if you will. Yeah. Agreed. And so the second news item is all around WrestleMania, Anthony. And guess what? WWE haven't got a fucking clue what they're doing for it, which, you know, might be all right if it was, you know, they had a year or so, but no, no, they've got to decide who's going to win the Rumble next week. <laughs> so, uh, that is so good. Yeah. Um, it really gives you faith in the product. It really does. I mean, I just... If you think about it, and, you know, a lot of stuff which came out around this, um, when, when this kind of new story broke, was you can kind of understand because they don't plan what's happening on fucking Raw or SmackDown until like the day of or, and that's why that, you know, there's such, you know, a, a shit show most, most weeks. So, um, it's not a massive surprise to think that, you know, nothing at the minute is completely locked in. Um, I think there was a lot of stuff up in the air. You know, we, we said last week that they have tweaked or changed, um, you know, the WrestleManias they obviously planned out. Here's the next three manias. Now they've moved the Hollywood theme back two years. Um, they've gone into the, um, Raymond James Stadium this year, which is where they were originally going to meant to be last year. So they're sticking with pirate theme again. They've decided it's going to be over two nights again. So I think that's now opened up a couple of different avenues. I think I've been hearing like murmurs and rumors of like who who do they want to bring back to star power? Like are we going to see Cena again this year? You know what 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 are we going to get? Well, considering Cena is still listed on the active roster and is still one of the higher paid wrestlers on that active roster, mm. I'd like to see him at least some point this year. <laughs> the amount <laughs> of shit people give Brock and uh, Cena's just there uh, <laughs> counting his money. Um, but obviously he was he was in the... Uh... <laughs> Cena didn't even give them once a month. <laughs> <laughs> well, exactly. He was uh, he was in the vignettes, um, you know, to hype the, the manias as well. So I think that could also be, you know, leading some people to believe that he's going to be coming back. But obviously they brought Goldberg back um you know seen as almost almost Yay. a lock at this point uh there's even been talk around are they going to try and pull taker back out of retirement like believe it or not he's only just fucking retired like that would just be the biggest piece of shit ever wouldn't it if they do that so um i don't know but i think it's it's definitely worrying times if we are you know a week away from the rumble and they've got no idea what that you know main event stuff's gonna be um and you know, it kind of indicates they haven't got a clue who's going to win the Rumble. So, not uh, not the best. Maybe they'll just decide on the day. Maybe they'll, you know, similar to us, we'll be there going, who's going to win the Rumble? Vince is just in the box. Saying, I don't know. <laughs> I, do you know what? Like, it worries me because I was like, I think, and it's one of the things I'll mention is like, I'm almost like, are they giving Cesaro a push? It feels like they're giving Cesaro mm. a push. And now I'm like, they probably are just to, to so they've got an option. Like, because we don't know yet, so we'll we'll push him just in case we want to use him. It's like so fucking worrying, so worrying. I mean, but um, thinking of uh, you know last year's Royal Rumble, I don't think Drew McIntyre kind of stood out as like oh he's definitely gonna win because he hadn't necessarily been given massive pushes or anything had he by that point. So obviously it was an amazing um, you know experience the fact he won and we were all made up and stuff like that. But I don't think we ever kind of went into it last year going ah oh, it's definitely gonna be Drew. I think when he came in and he put Brock on his ass and eliminated him, we were like, oh, shit, it could be Drew. But, yeah, like, maybe that was something similar. Maybe yeah. it was just in the run-up to the Rumble. They gave him a little bit of a push and then just decided to pull the trigger. They could just bring back fucking Taker, put him at number 30, and I he mean, wins. You, know, you, t- you don't know. This is the thing, like, in some sometimes a random surprise works. Like you say, we, we never had enough confidence to say Drew's going to win. I know you wanted him to win, but you're quite right. They never made it clear. And that was kind of a good thing when he won. But, um, I mean, you worry me now because they could put Taker in a 30 now and win it. I mean... Let's be honest. Like, Yeah. So I, I, feel like, yeah. I feel like something or, you know... Because they've come out and said that, you know, Shinsuke, who got a little mini push, didn't need the other week by being in the, um, you know, that gauntlet match or whatever until the very end and stuff like that. People thought, oh, that, you know, the high yeah. Shinsuke again. But... He's apparently being ruled out as being one of the people who's um, going to be in the main event picture for WrestleMania. So, you know, Cesaro hasn't even been discussed anywhere. Daniel Bryan obviously is um, the most rumoured. He's the one with the kind of the only real story coming into it. Of like, I've never won a rubble and I want to win it and that kind of thing. So it could just be something like Bryan and, and Roman. You know, for Drew, I don't think there's any idea. You know, I'm, I pray to fucking God that we're not sat here next week with Goldberg as our new champion and they've done it for a third fucking time and they've screwed the pooch like they did with Kevin Owens, like they did with The Fiend. If they do this to Drew, I'm going to lose my shit. 
I, I think it might happen. No. It, it worries me, but I think it might happen. I the only the only thing I would like to see, um, and even then, I, I don't think we want to see it. Is we you know we never got Goldberg versus Roman, did we? Because of everything happened, we had to settle for for Braun Strowman. Um, so I would be down for something happening with Roman getting like in, interrupting the match or something with Goldberg and, and McIntyre and, and costing Goldberg it or something, and then it's Spear versus Spear. Like that's something which. You know, okay, fine. I, I, but even then, Roman's a heel now, and I wouldn't want to see that wasted on Goldberg because he's a shit face. Thing is, I can't see unless they turn this into some amazing angle where, like, he becomes almost like a, a tweener of some sort because he's he's dealing with this egomaniac legend who thinks he can just strut in whenever he wants, and it that becomes a whole angle which I would really enjoy, but then it wouldn't keep him as a, as a heel heel. He'd just be like a, a good bad guy. Um, I, like, I want him to stay the fuck away from the title scene, to be honest, which is what I don't get with WWE constantly do it. And I know we're digressing onto something that's unrelated almost, but um, they constantly do this thing where it's like, we'll bring the legend back and put him right in the main event and we'll have him go for the title. Like, they don't need the titles at this point. And you're bringing legends back. So put him up against some fucker else. Yeah. Like, at the end of the day... I would have no problem with Goldberg returning if he went up against like John Cena or had some sort of exhibition like that that weren't about the title. But why does he have to ruin the title scene? Because the reality of it is he's not got a long contract, he won't do many matches, and the matches won't last long. So that's not really good for your big title. No, definitely not. I think um, you know Re- WrestleMania season always goes a bit mental, doesn't it? Because it's always the whole spectacle of it. Who can we bring back? Who's the bit? How can we get the eyeballs back on the product and stuff for ahead of the reset that they're that they're gonna do um, post mania? So, you know, we always see this kind of thing. You know, I think Goldberg versus Cena would be sound. You know, I, I agree with you, but I just I can't see Goldberg coming back to just lose against Drew McIntyre and then fuck off into the sunset. So I'm praying to God he doesn't fucking win the thing. But I'd like to think that if he has come back, he's not going to win. But there's a reason why he doesn't win, and then that can be his program for Mania. I just I want Drew and, and Goldberg over and done with. But Drew is the champion, um, still <laughs> post Rumble. So. Nah, yeah. What's going to happen is Goldberg's going to win the belt, and then Roman's going to lose the belt, and then we're going to get Roman Goldberg at Mania. Nah. <laughs> it can't. It can't happen. It can't happen. I'm, I'm telling you this now, happen. and then you're going to be kind of happy but sad because Kevin Owens is champ again. <laughs> um, <laughs> I I can't see Roman losing that belt for a long time. I, I I can see him having almost like a, you know, a year long fucking reign of terror kind of thing um, to really cement himself. I wouldn't surprise me if he just make a point of um, of exceeding CM Punk's run. To be honest wow. with you, be a very WWE thing to do. Yeah. Um, I could see it as well, especially with it, with this with this uh, this new character he's got going. But anyway, digress. Mm. But the point is, dude, we haven't got a fucking clue what they're doing for Mania. So the Rumble is going to be interesting because they're probably just going to decide the day off. <laughs> I love how that turned into and Goldberg's awful. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> most of the news articles could uh, could end up that way, couldn't it? But yeah, yeah. So my next one, Carl, is um, Ryback has been um, very outspoken lately, as a lot of people know about the WWE product. He likes to do this every once in a while. He'll, he'll rock up, get some eyes on his podcast. I think it's called Shooting Blanks. Um, and uh, or it might not be his, or is it just talk with Ryback? He's been on one called Shooting Blanks. I don't know if it's his. Uh, I, I, I'd love it if it's just called talk with Ryback and you're there saying, yeah, it's probably Shooting Blanks. I love it. No, he, he, Ryback, to be fair, I don't know if it's his blanks. podcast, but he was... He was um, on Shooting Blanks Wrestling Report, so I don't know if that's part of his, but because I think his might just be like talk to Ryback or Ryback TV or something like that. But it was Shooting Blanks was relevant, okay? <laughs> so, so he's been very outspoken lately about the WWE. Um, had a good bitch about Mark Henry. Mark Henry had a good bitch back. Um, he put like a surprisingly aggressive tweet out <laughs> saying about going to the. Um, to the the biggest competition and and really showing I'm paraphrasing again, but um, suggesting it was going to be AEW, he suggested in these interviews, you know, um, there's a lot of conversations about going back in the ring. He's not worried about ring condition. You know, if they want him to go in a 15 minute match, he can go, um, and he's just sort of lining things up business wise, and he's 
sort of in that whole conversation, he's basically he said that as for where he wants to wrestle, um, you know, he named a certain Wednesday night promotion, let's say, um, as they as they phrased it, and um, he's already been very vocal about the fact that uh, AEW are the the future of wrestling for him, and he, to be honest, it's like proper like, uh, forgive the. Uh, the way I'm going to put this right back, you know, don't don't come for us. But um, it's proper like thirsty bitch kind of stuff, isn't it? Like, notice me, notice me. He's even put like pictures of him with an AEW shirt and stuff like that. And it's like, you know, I think if they'd have wanted to sign you, they'd done it by now, if I'm honest. <laughs> and personally, I don't want to see him in AEW. Mm. Um, and neither does Mark Henry, evidently. <laughs> um, yeah, Mark Henry and, and Ryback's whole thing is, uh, is still going on a little bit, isn't it? But... I don't know. I think Ryback has had a bad rap as, you know, he's not been the best worker, not the safest worker, et cetera, et cetera. He's also been very vocal and, and stuff um, outside the wrestling world and stuff like that. But, you know, if you said to me, we're going to get Ryback versus Brian Cage, then yeah, I'm down for it. <laughs> I'd love to see them two meatheads go and batter each other. Um, to be honest, though, the bit that worries me is not so much Ryback as a wrestler. <laughs> And he was decent on the mid card. I'm not sure he was ever a main eventer, personal opinion. But um, he was decent on the mid card. He was a good big guy. You know what I mean? That was his whole nickname anyway. Um, what worries me is he's still got this fucking big chip on his shoulder about WWE. And as much as people like to say, you know, AEW are very petty and they take shots at WWE, they don't take big shots at WWE and they don't do it all the time. And I don't want it to become a platform. I don't think they'd let it become a platform, but I don't want it to become a platform for Ryback's massive chip on his shoulder so he can just take shots at WWE all the time because I don't I want the product to stand in its own right and I don't want it to become about this petty hatred he's got he just needs to kind of let it go like yeah they're like quite unscrupulous as a company and you know he'd have to fight tooth and nail for his own name that they're never going to use again it's like it's all cunt tactics and I totally agree with it but he needs to let it go like he can't, he can't move on to another business with that whole mentality, and that's basically how the tweet went out. Is like he's gonna show, he's gonna make this the biggest show, and he's gonna go there and they're gonna do awesome and show them. It's like don't do it to show them, do it because you love wrestling. Fuck's sake! See, it's times like this when um, you know, I I kind of lambast the fact that we're we're using this new software and, and we you know we prep we prep ahead of time with images and stuff because I just love to Photoshop Ryback's face on Elsa uh, from Frozen and just have let it go. Um, <laughs> I would, I'd love to see that. Nice. <laughs> but no, I think you're right. You know, <laughs> I, I've never been, I've never hated when AW taking shots at WWE, even like way back with the Brody Lee stuff, like, um, and, and like the Vince McMahon shots. I've never really hated it because it reminded me of the old, um, at the end of the day, rivalry is good, right? And it reminded me of the old Attitude Era where Nitro would be going after WWE and taking it to them, stuff like that. And, Honestly, I don't really mind it, but I think, to your point, do I want to see this be a vehicle for fucking, you know, Ryback bitching about WWE every week? Do I shit? So, no, hopefully if he does make his way there, then, yeah, it doesn't become all about WWE and, you know, the, the massive chip he's got on his shoulder, as you say. Uh, the best thing he can do, right, and I, I'm I'm not even trying to have a pop, the best thing he can do for me is to go in as, like, the quiet monster character mm. because the minute he starts cutting promos and he starts trying to be humorous and bitch about the other side that's when it's going to ruin the whole element for me if he comes in to just wreck people like you say we end up with like Ryback going up against Brian Cage or even um, the Mayor of Hawk monster himself you know that kind of thing um, they'd be good matches be down you know, for Miro. big guy versus big guy down for Miro for yeah Miro Miro would be a perfect pairing um, one that I'm not even sure we ever got in WWE, even though they were both there at the same time. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, it certainly wasn't memorable if we did. But uh, yeah, for me, he, he could go in like that. I mean, let's be honest. Like, I don't. I'm not a big fan of Goldberg. That's right. I brought it back around. I'm not <laughs> right. But there is always a place for a Goldberg type character, isn't there? And this isn't the first time he's been likened to Goldberg. Um, but you know, there is a place for that kind of character. I just, um, as I say, I think. His mindset right now and just that whole bitterness towards WWE, I think, would be a bad thing for to bring to AEW. Yeah, no, I I agree. But um, yeah, who knows if he if he does turn up there, then definitely some tasty matches on the cards. But yeah, I think if he goes there, they need to do it in the right way. But Anthony, Indeed. speaking of people going to AEW, have a guess who's going to AEW this week? 
whose brother from the WWE roster is going to AEW this week? Um, Roman Reigns. <laughs> hey, it's my brother Jim Anoa'i. No, it is of course Ryan <laughs> Nemeth, the brother of Dolph Ziggler. So um, it's been advertised for Wednesday's show. We're going to see Hangman Page in singles competition for the first time since I think November. Um, up against Ryan Nemeth. Um, so he's going by his his real name. I've heard that he's going in. Um, he's going under the ring name uh, Zolf Diggler. <laughs> I'd love it if he, um, oh, who was it? Because uh, what what was he called? Did he have a different name, or am I just get am I just getting this wrong? So obviously he was uh, he was in the the spirit. He's in the spirit yeah, squad, wasn't he? he? Was he Mickey? He was Nicky, yeah, Nicky in, in the uh, Nicky spirit sorry. squad, and then he joined Care and White for a bit, didn't he? But it might have just been as Dolph Ziggler, just not the Dolph Ziggler we know today. But um, he was his caddy or something, mm. wasn't he? But yeah, I'd I'd love it with some sort of thing around that he had like a caddy gimmick that'd be hilarious but <laughs> no i think it's an interesting one this i don't really know much about him um in terms of his wrestling abilities or anything like that how long he's been doing it for if he's any you know if he's any good but obviously dolph is a hell of a worker in terms of what he does in the ring and stuff like that you know uh, he, he can sell he can really well, sell that's, to be honest, fair. That, that's probably been the thing that's hindered him the most you know there, there was a time and i think i've mentioned it a few times on the show there was a time when he was white hot and i remember him cashing in that money in the bank against Del Rio the night after WrestleMania and it was fucking electric. Do you know what I mean? He was so over and hot on that night. And I don't know, he's just he's just been on a downward spiral ever since really. I don't think he's ever been able to live back up to that again. And now you know, with all due respect to him, he's just a Shawn Michaels clone that just fucking bumps his ass around the ring every two minutes. And it's a bit of a shame really. You know, his his promo work never got any better um, you know, he apparently does stand up now. I don't think he's fucking funny at all. Um, so, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I don't know. You know, I'm I'm interested to see what what we get from Ryan Emmett, um whether or not he does. That being said, you know, like not to digress, but like I can't think of the last time they let Ziggler have a fucking microphone. Um, I don't even know if he can talk. Well, he he, he spoke for a little bit this week on SmackDown, didn't he? When he uh. Against uh, Cesaro, he just got on the microphone and said... No, I'll give you that, because you come out to challenge him, but... Yeah. I mean, like, a proper promo. Yeah, he doesn't really speak much at all, to be fair. Um, and to be honest... I was waiting for that to go on, and you're like, well, he got a promo last <laughs> week, and you're like, no, I'm talking about a promo, promo. <laughs> just keep uh, keep teeing them up, I'll just keep <laughs> knocking them out. Um, but no, I, I don't know, yeah, I think... Uh, mm, I had some issues with that, to be fair, but we'll, we'll chat about that on this week in wrestling, but... Yeah, interesting one. Yes, we are going to see Ryan Nemeth in AEW um, against Hangman. So obviously it's not going to be a match he wins. But yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see. Um, I've, I've never seen him wrestle before. No idea how good he is. Um, so yeah, I'm quite excited for this one. be nice to know if he can hang, man. <laughs> hey, that was oh, awful. That was awful. Dad jokes I'm sorry. I'll go. Day. <laughs> <laughs> so. 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 My next one, Carl from one of the most credible news sources in the modern day, <laughs> TMZ. Um, and this is TMZ Sports. Apparently spoke to Stephanie McMahon quite recently. And naturally the topic come up of Ronda Rousey. And apologies, Carl, because this is kind of a non-news thing, but it kind of suggests like, yeah, she's definitely coming back. And maybe soon, because um, they were asking about the possible return um, Steph's echoed the same things that were said in the past that uh, Ronda's very public about the fact that she wanted to start her own family and, and have some time away and so on like that. But she's also said that the doors are very much open for it and they are very hopeful that the former champ will make a return. And um, I don't know, the, the, I suppose it's more about the, the eagerness of, of Steph would suggest. Like, Do you think they may be actively pursuing a return? Could this be something we see at the Rumble, Carl? Let's start some rumours. I mean, every other fucker does. So why why not us, eh? Um, I don't know. Uh, you know, is I mean, is can a... you believe Ronda Rousey's coming back for the Women's Royal Rumble? <laughs> Shit's crazy. Right. Um, <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. There's no better time to bring her back than a fucking Royal Rumble, is there? You know. So is is she gonna? Hang on. I think we should get ahead of the game. One sec. <clears throat> Carl, can you believe Ronda Rousey won the Women's Royal Rumble? Oh, what a shock return that was. <laughs> Uh, don't, don't, because it'll happen. It'll happen. 
we'll just save a bit of time for next week. They'll, find, they'll find a way to make uh, Ronda Rousey and Charlotte co-winners because, you know. <laughs> I need to moan about that a little bit later. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know exactly what you mean. Um, <laughs> but no, I don't know. I think if she comes back at the Royal Rumble, um, it's a, do you know what? It's going to be such a weird Rumble this year. Just the fact there's going to be no fans because it's going to be really different. Well, actually, oh, is there going to be fans? No, there's not. Is there Tony Mania? Be no, fans? I don't think. Um, I think they were intended on having fans for WrestleMania, anyway, they but not necessarily for the Rumble. Yeah, I think. Um, I think Stephanie has actually said that. Yeah, WrestleMania is the first time that they're, they're going to get the fans back. But no, it's going to be weird because the fan reaction to surprise entrance and stuff like that. Usually, if someone comes back as a surprise straight away, they're a face. If they come back in the Rumble, because people are excited to see them. Um, like it's very rare, like you know, anyone who was a bad guy or anything, if they come back in the rumble straight away, you, you, they get a pop, don't they? Um, so yeah, but I, I think Rhonda does better work as a heel, I think, towards the end of her run. Like, don't get me wrong, when she debuted, I was blown away by the match she had with um, uh, Angle and Triple H and Steph. I thought she was she looked so good for someone who was so green for the business. You know, the more you think about that, the more you think back to that, and this is um. No offense, Steph, but this isn't technically directed at you. But like, she was surrounded by like real professionals in the ring. There, it was a, a good way of supporting someone who just started. And she definitely, obviously, she's a, she, you know, she came from the UFC, so she knows how to go. Um, but it is different. It's more theatrical in it. You need to know your spots and what's happening. And um, I, I think they, they pulled a really good move do, doing that sort of match for someone so green because I think the support was there. Do you know what I mean? Massively, even from Steph, but obviously she's not a professional wrestler, or certainly a legend in any sort of sense. But Triple H and Kurt Angle are both fucking legends. Mm. Mm. No, I think, um, yeah, I, I, I think there's no better match you could have. Really, she, she took, she just, it was, it was amazing. To be fair, I, I was blown away by that debut. The way she just fucking just went to town. It wasn't like you know slow and cautious. She just went, took it to you know even beat up Triple H and stuff for a bit. So. Yeah, I thought it was fantastic, and I think she is a very big name. It's WrestleMania season. I think I'm sure they'd love to have her back. Um, you know, in in an ideal world, it would have been coming back. She, I think she definitely would have been back if it was Hollywood. If it was WrestleMania Hollywood, because obviously she's a bit of a, a mega star in that sense. But I, I I'd like to think they're still mm. going to bring her back, even though, um, you know, there's not going to be a lot of fans and stuff like that because you can't hold off forever, can you? So, yeah, I think we will see her back. Yeah, I, to be honest, I think um, I think it's a definite she's going to be back. I think um, I I personally think it's going to be at the Rumble. I'm, I'm going to call it now. <laughs> well, you know she's returning for the. She's won it, hasn't she? It's going to be the Ronda Rumble. <laughs> I don't think she'll necessarily win, but I think that's going to be her coming back. I thought we'd already uh, broke the new story that that she'd won. She was a co-winner with Charlotte. Remember? <laughs> no, that, we couldn't possibly do that. It's next week. Oh, of course, of course. We're not psychic on this show. Um, yeah, what a shock, though. Both Charlotte and Ronda like, <laughs> landing outside of the ring at the same time. You've just never seen it before. Never seen it. And then, and then Steph storming out and tearing a <laughs> quad. That's crazy. <laughs> uh, I was going to make exactly the same joke. <laughs> that's, that's amazing. Bravo. Bravo. <laughs> um, so, my next one, Carl. Your next one. Oh, sorry. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa. Wait, whoa! The Ronda one was mine, wasn't it? It was. It was. You want you want to talk some now, don't you? Yeah, 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 I do. Okay. So my next one, Anthony. Do you like belts? Do you like battles? What about battles for belts? <laughs> because yeah, okay. <laughs> A- Count me in. AEW have um, filed some trademarks, um, one of which being Battle of the Belts. So they filed this on the 18th of January, which um, so they basically filed it for pro wrestling and merchandise use. So obviously with everything going on at the minute with AEW, with the way that they're in there with um, Impact, there's kind of uh, a couple of different plates potentially spinning with other promotions. You know, that was unveiled a tournament bracket for to find a new number one contender um, for the for Hikaru Shida's uh, title with one side of the bracket looking like it's going to be contested in Japan. Um, nice. So, yeah, it's a very interesting uh, time. Hey, could that be a way of sneaking Riho back in? I mean, I wouldn't like to speculate, but yes, definitely. Um, it's got to be, hasn't it? I, I think <laughs> uh, 
Oh, yeah. I think I see her winning um, that side of the bracket and coming back, and then we get Akari Shida versus Rio. I think would be a fantastic match. That'd be pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I think it's a very uh, interesting timing on this one. The fact that they've got Battle of the Belts, so it kind of is it going to be its own pay per view? Is it going to be something huge where we've got like AEW versus Impact, like title versus title? Are we going to add? maybe Japan into the mix as well? Are we going to have multiple promotions, maybe AAA, you know, or is it literally just going to be, you know, one match and it's, you know, Battle of the Belts and it's like the, the AEW tag champions versus the Impact? Because, you know, we, we that would be make the most sense, wouldn't it? The Young Bucks versus the Good Brothers. Yeah, I mean, this could culminate in an Impact versus AEW pay-per-view. Mm-hmm. Um, I would love if they went the whole thing with it and like you say we we involved um, New Japan uh, they've got a working relationship with NWA you know they could they, like you say AAA could be a, a contender they could get some of the Lucha style stuff going on there'd be all sorts and like I'd, I'd love for something that big to happen you know but realistically I think it's probably going to be Impact versus AEW and they've given a good name yeah I mean um, you know that that would seem to be the most logical like for me, it could even be, you know, something as small as just the one match, just like the tag titles versus like tag champs versus tag champs. And I, I, I wouldn't want to speculate and blow it way out of proportion of making it this mega pay per view card where we're going to get all of Impact versus all of AW or anything like that. If that's not going to be the case, but you know, they've definitely got the relationship where they could do that. Um, you know, they could throw the NWA. I mean, in. think of the paper. The pay per view itself would be a pretty good one to have, like, you know, um. The Impact World Champion, whatever his name is, against um, Omega. We like to say Young Bucks versus the Good Brothers. You could have um, Shida going up against their current Knockouts Champion. Apologies, guys, I don't watch Impact enough to know the names. Um, what are the belts have they got? Have they got anyone to contend with the TNT title? Do they have a TNT level champ? Um, they had a, um, an X Division title. I don't know whether that's still going because again, I, I'm not. So if the X, yeah. But um, I mean, personally, I'm sorry because it's. Don't think I've mentioned it this month, but I'm going to do it again. Um, I, I really, and they always tease these things, and like I really want the inclusion of New Japan. I'd love to see the current iteration of the Bullet Club take an umbrage to the old school Bullet Club, um, which they've obviously hinted at a few times on Impact and AEW. Um, you know, all embracing each other, and then like the old school Bullet Club. I'd love Tamatonga and and the gang, Gorillas of Destiny all come along and join in the fray as well. I think it'd be awesome. Mm, no, definitely. And that's that's my monthly mention <laughs> of Tamatonga being on one of our shows. Somebody mm-hmm. loves Tamatonga. Um, I think he's ace. I think it's a shame that he's not on one of the shows I actually watch. Even with his new haircut? Because I only catch... I catch... I, I don't really know. I've not seen him in a while. I just look at the stuff I saw that he did in New Japan, and I'm like, God, it's a shame I don't watch New Japan, but I never watch New Japan. Uh, and I just think he'd fit really well in like an AEW type product. And it's a shame we haven't got that yet. That's all I'm saying. Well, who knows? You know, maybe that is what we're going to get with this Battle of the Belts thing. But yeah, very interesting. Um, And I'm keen to see where it goes. Me too. Can I, can I, uh, can no, I do one now? Fucking go now. You might as well. Okay. So my next one, Carl, uh, relates to uh, Dax Harwood, who you might know as um, one of FTR. And uh, a lot of people don't know this, but he, at one point, uh, FTR were part of WWE. Um, they were they were a tag team there as well. Can't remember the name of them, but you know they were they were popular on NXT anyway. Um, <laughs> I was only kidding. Um, so yeah, but he's he's basically referring back to the time when they were in NXT, and and they had two particularly good friends, another tag team, um, uh, being Chad Gable and Jason Jordan, which I think were the American Alpha. Was that their name of their tag mm-hmm. team? I mean, sadly, they got moved to the main roster and split up really fucking quick because we can't have anything nice. Um, but he, he's sort of referred to... Uh, to be fair, the, the article like tries to suggest it's all about Chad Gable, but it's not. He, he gives um, Jason Jordan a lot of credit as well. But um, I think at a time when Chad Gable's not really being used properly at all, uh, and he's only just managed to come out of the shorty G stuff, and now he's just in comedy skits with Otis for some fucking reason, um, I think it's very interesting time and in that on this particular podcast which i think was Arn anderson's podcast um he he's mentioned the fact that you know the both him and jason jordan to be fair are people that he'd love to see in AEW. 
Um, and again, you can listen to the whole thing on on Arn's podcast. But essentially, it's the their belief of like they're they're really good, really good workers, hard workers. Um, in fact, he even cited Jason Jordan as is probably one of the hardest working performers he's ever been in the ring with, which is a real compliment coming from these guys. Um, and it's I don't know for me, I'm like, I think correct me if I'm wrong. I think Jason Jordan's still contracted WWE as well, so it's probably something that we're never going to get, or certainly not anytime soon. But um, it does make you think, what what could they do with those two? Because Chad Gable, you've mentioned a few times, he's he's fucking strong, and he's really good in the ring, and he just doesn't get the the airtime. And when he does, it's not really used right. No. So I think you called it, Dax. Bring him, bring him to AEW. I think um, you know something else which should be a good fit for him in AEW as well is AEW is a, bit, a lot smaller in terms of their roster. Like they don't care as much about size, about having big. Um, yeah, that's why they, they end up with that jab of all petite wrestling, don't they? Mm. Because they, they won't, like, it's not just like, well, he's a big guy, let's go with that guy. Well, that's it. You know, you've got, like, the old school guy, like like Jim Cornette, for example, fucking hates AW for many reasons, but one of the reasons is he's like, they're just a bunch of regular guys. They don't even look like wrestlers. They're not even built, etc., etc. But if you're a great worker, it um, doesn't matter how tall you are or anything like that, does it? So, you know, Gable is fantastic. He's not being utilised, you know. It's the crazy thing. I can't believe people still look at it that way. When you see people like AJ Styles, um, a bit of a wild example, but Ricochet, and people like that who are so impressive in the ring with their athleticism. And you think, how can you think it's all about being a big guy who can't really move? Yeah. Because that's what the old school was, wasn't it? Let's be honest, Hulk Hogan's moveset isn't fucking fantastic, <laughs> is it? No, definitely not. I think, um, you know... It's it's a hard one because a lot of people, um, you know, when you had Hulk Hogan, Ultimate Warrior, stuff like that, you know, you still had your your Randy Savage, you still had your Bret Hart and your people like that who were coming up and they changed the landscape a little bit. You know, you've had Daniel Bryan as as, as your yeah. champion, you've had AJ as your champion. So even in WWE, the landscape's changed a little bit, but I don't think it's ever yeah. going to get to a point like an AEW where, you know, like if you look at the champions, you've got Drew McIntyre, you've got Roman Reigns, and they're both great, but at the same time, they're both fucking built like brick shit houses because... WWE wants yeah. that, and when, and let's be honest, when Drew wasn't as built, he didn't get as uh, as good a run. So, and I'm not saying it's all about that, but <laughs> <laughs> he went away, he got some muscles, and and now he's well, chapped. Yeah. That is true. <laughs> um, so, speaking of, yeah, I, I haven't got a segue, but speaking of impact, like we did before, um, and us not knowing who the champions were, well, guess what? Neither do they. So. Um, shockingly enough, believe it or not, um, the official uh, impact, I'm not sure if it was their Twitter or their Instagram, I think it might be their Instagram, um, posted a, a, a picture up of um, basically Rich Swan uh, holding the the championship. And the caption read, Falabar <laughs> eyeing up the TNA World Heavyweight Championship. <laughs> it's like, how, how can you get that, that so, so wrong? Like, who the, who's managing their social accounts? Like, Damn, <laughs> that is bad. That's that's so shocking, isn't it? And it's like, it's like, well, I clearly don't watch Impact. <laughs> and it's like, you know, in fairness, like they've had a lot of shit over the years, Impact, and obviously they've had a lot of ups and downs and stuff. But they've they're never kind of seen as as big players and stuff like that. And when you've got like little snafus like this that just make them look like such you know small time, doesn't it? It's a uh, it's just silly. How can you get something like basic wrong, like not knowing who you fucking who your champion is or calling them the wrong name? Like silly. Yeah. And am I right in saying like they didn't even delete it that quick either? Like they let people really, really rip them for it for a bit and make good note of it before it actually even disappeared. Oh yeah, it was up. Uh, there was loads of people like, commenting, taking the piss and stuff like that. But they didn't just like address it or be like, "Whoops, we made a mistake or we meant this." They just deleted it and just hid from it. <laughs> Just put up a photoshopped version where they put uh, <laughs> Falabar's head on there. There we yeah. go, fixed Fix. it. I mean, if they did that, I'd have, I'd have a lot more respect, to be fair. But they just kind of just ran away from it and like hid, didn't they? So, um, yeah, not not major kind yeah, of... To be fair, yeah, I think that would be a good laugh if they actually went for some really bad-looking Photoshop <laughs> just to fix it. Um, but yeah, not not a major news story, but one that we just thought was, uh, was pretty funny, nonetheless. Yeah, that's to get it mentioned, isn't it? Speaking of that to get it mentioned, didn't it? Um, not the best segue, but we'll we'll live with it. Tony Khan. Um, for those of you who don't know, he owns an AEW. Um, he's very recently been talking about this ever um, existence suggestion that we're getting another hour's worth of TV. Mm. Now he he engaged in some oral sessions with Rene Paquette, and 
during this, he was asked a number of questions about AEW, and um, he referred to their um, their presence on the likes of YouTube, and that he's really proud of what's been achieved with Dark. Um, obviously, really proud of what's happened with Dynamite, but he mentions the the ever growing, ever expanding roster, the amazing talents. Uh, he's well aware that I think not everyone gets the amount of airtime. I mean. A lot of people don't give Dark, I think, the credit it deserves. Like, if you're on Dark, you're on, like, the the really, like, the dregs of their show. But I think it's actually a really good way of pushing uh, wrestling on the internet. Like, NWA Power is exclusively on YouTube. So, anyway. Um, so, he's mentioned about this, this extra hour of TV. And he's heavily suggested that 2021 is the um, the year where you're going to see some, some major sort of calendar expansion, let's say, for AEW. Um, so he's not giving much away, but it seems like we're going to be getting a lot of um, a lot of extra content potentially. Um, and you know we've seen some changes, and I'm not suggesting that they're gonna they're gonna be significantly impactful, but like we've seen them. Uh, I believe Revolution is going to be their first pay per view that takes place on a Sunday. So we're seeing them move some things around and maybe test some time slots. Is that a deliberate thing? I don't know. Um, see what kind of uh, attention they get at different times and maybe that's a deliberate thing um when they're referring to a third hour i really fucking hope they don't mean on top of dynamite i hope it's a separate thing otherwise they're gonna go for the raw problem yeah but he, um, um tony khan has uh he has come out and said that it definitely won't be um a third hour so thank <laughs> fuck for that um <laughs> thank but fuck that for also that. means anthony in terms uh, of this week in wrestling then you know it's probably only fair for you to get to cover an AEW show now because i've had dynamite all this time and you know, being able to enjoy that's true. that. So. That's true. There you go. We're going to be so imbalanced. We had a nice even four. Five just doesn't feel right. I'm not doing impact. <laughs> Neither no. am I. No. <laughs> you do <Ew>. it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so there's not a lot to tell just yet, but certainly keep your eyes peeled during 2021 because there's going to be some big old changes for AEW. There is indeed. And speaking of big old changes... Got quite a significant breaking story today um, in terms of changes for WWE. And specifically for our US listeners. The WWE Network will be no more in its current... <gasps> so, hold your horses. Basically, um, WWE Network has now been acquired, um, the streaming services in the US, by NBC to be um, part of their Peacock streaming network yes another streaming network um so uh but um vince couldn't pass up the opportunity for another cock reference he went for it well thinking back to the uh old dx jokes uh, vince <laughs> loves cock and he loves peacocks so um <laughs> but yeah so nbc ever uh, struck a deal with WWE, which will see the WWE network um basically lift and shift over to the peacock um streaming platform um interestingly that only costs 4.99 uh, whereas the wwe network does cost 9.99 right now however that will mean that um if they if they stick with that they're now going to start getting ads so um peacock for 4.99 does include ads they can upgrade to peacock premium um for 9.99 which is what they're paying already for ad free so um Interesting decision, yeah. I would say. So, uh, apparently... I think it's the right move. I mean, if anything, it gives them more exposure, you know. Um, but then again, does it? <laughs> because it's a, they're going from something which is already, you know, established. I know they're going to be moved across to NBC and stuff like that anyway, but people might just be like, oh, well, I don't want this shit. I just want to... And, you know what I mean? You know what people are like. But, um, you know, it could be it could be great for them. I think, you know, being able to have this extra exposure for people who will get it because they want to just watch friends, for example, and go, Oh, I get to do a network now. I get to get to watch that as well. Yeah. I th- I think, I think it's a good move for that. Like this is probably a stronger streaming platform than the WWE network have done. I don't think they've really still got a very solid infrastructure for it. Um, so I think piggybacking on top of a, a, a decent, uh, and I always quietly hope to uh, Netflix would get it the amount of um, WWE-related Netflix content we have within the big show show and mm-hmm. that main event film that was kind of shit and um, various other bits and bobs. I was like, yeah, we're going to get... WWE's going to end up on Netflix eventually, and that would have been awesome. But 
Oh, mostly because we get Netflix in this country, so that would, you know. Yeah. So Peacock is not something the UK is going to get, so I don't know what we're going to get. Well, um, are we still going to stick with WWE Network? Oh. We are, Anthony. We are going to be staying put. So for Europe, um, they've announced that there'll be no change. Uh, you know, if you are a WWE Network subscriber, you will remain with WWE Network. Still for nine ninety nine. <laughs> and you'll continue to pay nine ninety nine, <laughs> whether you fucking like it or not. <laughs> um, I mean, let's be honest. Anyway, we already pay nine ninety nine in terms of great british pounds therefore and um, we already are overpaying yeah they didn't really bother acknowledging the exchange yeah, rate they never do really um yeah so yeah. it is is kind of what it is but yeah so uk um europe won't be affected um but yeah if you are in the states i believe it's sometime i think is it march end of march um i want to say end of march so yeah. i think uh Oh yeah, I think it says here the first the first event to hit the service is going to be Fast Lane on March twenty first. So mid and I mid believe uh, they're looking at they're looking at doing some sort of migration of their existing uh, users, aren't they? As well, so like if you currently signed to the WWE Network, they're probably going to send you an email at some point. Probably will. You know. Probably will. sign up to this. Um, but yeah, so interesting one really. It, it's a, it's definitely a. An interesting move for WWE. I wonder what it means um, going forward. Obviously, it's going to be a good deal for them. But do you think we might see pay per views potentially coming off the network um, and moving more towards I hope like not. well on, on on? I mean, this could be a clear sign from the investors that they want pay per views to be pay per views, and um, yeah, the network. It's not going to be a thing to draw people onto the network anymore because it's not their product. So um, yeah, we might see that again where it's like pay forty dollars and you can watch it once. Well, that um, yeah, that's where, that's where my head was at when I first saw this. I I thought eventually they're going to drop, you know, getting pay per views for everyone who has a Peacock. Instead, it'll be a standalone thing where you have to buy them again because. Which is going to be mental, really, isn't it? Because if you look now, you know, you can get over here in the UK, you can get WWE Network for 9 99 you can watch everything on it, or you can get like the pay per view yeah. with uh, BT Sport, for example. And you know, it's, it's more than 9 99 isn't it? And it's like for just the event. It's way more than So I get it because, you know, that's the traditional way to watch it over here. And, you know, whether it's Skybox Office or anything like that, it's it's the way that people like it and they like just having it on their, you know, their set top boxes or whatever, don't they? So, you yeah. Know. And this is the thing for me, though, whether we continue to have WWE Network is one thing. I think if they make that move, they'll make it across the board. So we'll have WWE Network, but pay-per-views won't be turning up on yeah. there. That's what I reckon is going to happen. Yeah, I can, I can see that as so, well. So. They're going to do us over at the same time. <laughs> but hopefully that isn't the case. Thanks, Vince. <laughs> Fuck you, Vince. But yeah, so WWE Network will be no more is the way we know it and love it today. And you know what? They've got a good history of successful choices with streaming services, so I'm sure this is going to go really, really well. Really well. Really, really well. So that was it, I think. That was the it. Yeah. report. Yes. <laughs> Huzzah. Huzzah, indeed. So what have we got coming up next, Carl? Coming up next. Oh, hang on, hang on. Let's be professional about this. We'll be back with you after a word from our sponsors. Oh, fine. 